Hello, this is Dr. Ray Ramirez from Lakeview Veterinary Clinic, helping your pets live the best life possible for as long as possible. Quiet on the set here, please. As you can see, we have some volunteers from our studio audience, because we had one of our clients come in and said, they like the, our videos, but he needs more pets. So, we got some more here. So, all that racket is being made by, no, not this, of course. We have little kitties. These are their aliases. This is Spot, and this is Climber, and we have two other volunteers whose name is... Abe. This is Abe, and this little one here... Is Cutie Cute. Is Cutie Cute. I didn't name these. That's why I had to ask. So, but, so we thought we'd talk about... You noticed, I think you may have noticed, hopefully, that nobody has any open eyes or any ears that are open. So these guys are very, very young. Um, somebody found the, these, the, the trio here outside, the three musketeers, and Mr. Climber here got volunteered to be here as well. So we're nursing them. So we thought we'd talk about a little bit of nursing care. What happens if mom dies or can't take care of the babies and you need to supplement some of the babies here. And this type of thing works the same whether they're dogs or kitties. We just have volunteers here who are kitties. So first thing is what are we feeding? We're feeding a little kitten milk replacer. We're using a little um, pet nurser that has a nice soft rubber tip. has kind of a big opening on there and so that's very important. And so you just feed them and they usually kind of mother nature in the suckling takes over Sometimes they need a little help. These guys were just fed 20 minutes ago, so our timing wasn't the best. Somebody forgot to tell their agent not to feed them so that they could be at, trained properly for the video. So, but you feed them a little bit, most of them will suckle very well, and when they get full, they're kind of done. But then the second thing that mom does is she stimulates them to go to the bathroom. So that's what you're going to have to do. Now, if you're just helping a mom that maybe has a whole bunch of kitties or puppies, and so you're just supplementing the feeding, but you don't have to do everything else, the mom will take care of that, so you don't have to do that. But one of the things that we like to use, and we'll use a different rag, pardon my reach, and we'll use one of these little blue rags, we warm it with warm water, and what you're doing is you just stimulate like if the mom is licking their belly. And they'll then, see we even got a little tinkle of urine here. You should probably do this away from the other kitties so they don't all get peed on on there, but I don't know if you can see that little wet part of there, is from that stimulating. And you need to do that for each of your kitties and puppies every time you feed them if you don't have mom. Now if you have mom that's help where you're just helping because she doesn't have enough milk, the mom will still usually take care of that. But you need to do that if not. How often do you do that, Dr. Mirrors? Every time they feed, they should poop. Okay, so it's just kind of a little rhythm of nature thing in there. Okay, so we're feeding them. How often? Let them kind of tell you. Most of the time, we're having to go like three or four hours during the day. We're real fortunate here. This is the Royal Wee. My staff member, Megan, is doing an excellent job with this, and I think her children are helping out too. So shout out to them. We have Landon who's helping, and DJ... And I'm going to forget the one of them. The most important one, of course, Owen. So, but they're helping out tremendously and having a good time doing it. So, but we're, we've been able to already. We know these guys are probably under 10 days old because their eyes aren't open yet. But even already, they're, for the most part, sleeping through the night. So that's pretty good on there. You don't always get that lucky. But a lot of times by 7 to 10 days, we are sleeping through the night so you don't have to get up all the time. But then during the day, every time they cry out, that's when you want to feed them. Generally, that's about three to four hours. The main reason they're crying now is because we took them out of their little warm, snuggle place, and they're like looking all over. It's like, hey, what's going on? So that's step two. Or, well, I guess we're on step three. So we've got step one, we're feeding. Step two, we're making sure they, they poop and pee. And then step three, they have to be warm especially the first two weeks, first 14 days of their life, they get their, they get their body warmth from the mom. 
Okay, so if mom's not around, then we have to supply that. So that's where the little stuffed animal, that can be helpful too. But we have a wide variety here. We're using this warm water bottle, which the kitties really seem to like a lot. We also have this little fancy self-made heating element, which is in a plastic bag, which I think you notice why we need the plastic on there for cleanliness purposes. But it's, made, it's just regular rice is in here and we just tied a knot in the end and you microwave this to get it warm you don't want it hot you just want it warm so that it's warm to the touch and then you put that in there as well and let them keep warm with that and so those two things work real well the water bottle the kitty seem to like more but it loses its heat pretty quickly the rice seems to last longer so two, two little notes there your, your mileage may vary but the third thing we use, and we use this as a supplement for all of this, are these snuggle safes. These are great little machines. We actually use these for our surgery patients to keep them warm as well. But you can pop them in the microwave. You can see depending on how strong your microwave is, depends on how long you have to leave it in. And so what we do, this is just their little travel kennel, but we have it underneath a little uh, towel, and then they stay on top of that okay on top of the towel and then these little things are right next to it so they say nice and warm now this isn't warm this is actually chilly right now so that's why they're like hey we want to be warm how come we're not warm so but that is very very important we can't we can't have them too hot but when they can move like this this is helpful because we can have things that are pretty hot and they'll get close to it when they when they need to or further away if they need to be a little bit cooler so that can help out so feeding, making sure they poop, making sure they don't fall off of things. So that's why they're usually in a box of some sort. And keeping warm are the three keys. And then just have fun. Remember in our gentling technique when we talked about that? So um, I'll come back to that and talk to that in a minute. So this is Dr. Ray Ramirez at Lakeview Veterinary Clinic, helping your pets live the best life possible for as long as possible. And if you need a new little kitty, I'm going to be running out of these pretty quick, um, but this, we're filming this, um, what are we here, right at the beginning of April, this is not an April Fool's, we do need homes for these little guys, some of them have homes, some of them do not, um, so if you're interested, call us at Lakeview Veterinary Clinic, area code 309-39, whoops, that's not the right one, area code 309-699-6443, and we can get you lined up with a um, movie star famous little kitty that's helping us all live the best life possible for as long as possible. And if, I have your, if you have a regular veterinarian, have your pet seen by him regularly. And if you don't have a regular veterinarian, we'd love to see you at Lincoln.